because it's Mr. Hamill for photography class on April 30th. We're going to do things slightly different today. Um, I'm going to do some editing on one of my photos and I'm just doing it to give you some, you know, review, inspiration on what you need to start doing to your photos. Um, you're not turning in any photos yet. Uh, as you know from last class, April 28th, we are going to be turning in photos down the road, but right now I just want you to start editing. I'm going to give you some days to edit. Um, let's start with some quick little pointers. Camera settings. So Ocean got in touch with me um, because after last critique, she was wondering what was going on with her camera settings, and we determined that the image quality was on small JPEG, and that's why um, the image was coming out so small. Um, let's see if I can pull up an example real quick. Well, one way you can definitely do that, this is the image we're going to work on later, but one way you can definitely do that is just go into image, image size, and it's going to tell you how many pixels make it up. If it says something like 700 by 300, something very small, then you know you probably shot it very small. Go into your camera, hit menu, menu, go to the camera settings, um, and look for image quality. If you're using a camera like what we use at school, you want it to be at RAW. Um, that gives you the most leeway to edit. All right, set it to RAW. Check your exposure and ISO. So I remember in the critique, I think Matthew had some um, shots that were grainy. That might have been an ISO issue. It also might have been an image quality issue. So I'd say check them both. Okay. Um, before we jump into editing, let's look at, uh, I want you guys to check out this Washington Post article. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. It's not exactly related to photography, but I'm having all of my classes look at it because um, I thought it was a pretty cool uh, story. It made me think about what you guys are capable of doing. Um, you know, the stuff that you can create as you're stuck, right? Like the rest of us at home. Um, basically, it's about this kid, and I should have had the article pulled up already. Let me see if I can get it up quickly. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. It's about this kid high school student in Virginia, I think in Alexandria, and he uh, created a bot. He, he programmed a bot uh, to called BirdBot to <laughs> um, help him and his friends. Um, I think he wanted to buy shoes or something like that, like limited edition shoes that were first released and he wanted to be able to get them online before anyone else or before they were sold out online. He put it up on the internet and... Um, People started using it to hoard Nintendo Switches, because I guess Nintendo Switches are in demand right now since everyone's stuck at home. So scalpers and flippers started buying them, and now apparently if you buy a Switch online, it can go for a lot more than the value of it uh, would normally, like if you buy it at like Walmart or Target, because the bots buy them first, and then these people scalp them for more. So it's an interesting article about uh, some of the interest that this sparked in this guy in his article then in the article's name's Nate um, you know what he wants to do after high school because of this experience some of the attention and notoriety that he has um, gained since this has all happened um, you can see right here he's a junior at TC Williams High School in Alexandria Virginia so read it on your attendance for today there's going to be some reflection questions this is going to be a very easy quiz grade I know it's not photography that's okay I'm going to give you guys an easy quiz grade on this, um, and that'll be your weekly grade since we're still editing. Okay. All right. So let's look at editing now. Let's look at editing now. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Lightroom. Okay. This is the image we're going to mess with. This is one that I'm currently in the process of editing. Um, this is uh, a Van the Vanderbilt Mansion. 
It's in um, Hyde Park, New York. Um, it's right next to the uh, the um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt Library and Home, um, where he's buried, the pre former president. Uh, when I was here, this was a while ago, but when I was here, I was taking photos and I thought it was interesting. We had these people sleeping on the bench, chilling here. We had the mansion over here and the construction. I thought it was a good juxtaposition. So what I want to show you though, is if we scroll down to like what I started with, right? At the beginning of Lightroom here. And my, uh, there we go. My mouse is giving me problems. My tablet is giving me problems. This is what I started with, okay? Just through my Lightroom editing, you can see what I brought out in the picture. This is where I, I liked it, okay? And over here, I'm not gonna go through much of Lightroom simply because not everyone has it. And you can do this stuff in Photoshop. We've already reviewed Photoshop. So, and I'm at the process for this photo of editing in Photoshop. But I just want you to see that all of this is the same as if you open the image raw in Photoshop, right? You get all of these same, all of the same um, controls. So open recent, let's see, uh, let's see if I can find it. Hmm. Giving me trouble. I will find it, don't worry, don't worry. There it is. All right. So photos unedited. And this was um, Vanderbilt Mansion. And let's see if I can remember where it is. That's going to be the hard part. I want to say it's um, before that. Before that. Before that. I think it's around 80. 70? There it is. Okay. So here's one. This is not the exact same photo, I don't think, but it's close. I took a bunch. Like you can see right here, I took a bunch of the same because I knew it was a good shot. So I told you, I got down, I bent over, I framed the image, I moved around. I didn't take one and run. I'll tell you that right now. So, all right. Um, let me just open up one. It doesn't really matter. What I want to show you though is when you open it in Photoshop, you get, see how bad this looks comparatively? You get all of the same controls from Lightroom all in here. Um, so if you don't have Lightroom, that's fine. You can still do a lot of the same editing stuff all in here, right? So open the image, right? Here's what we get. So right away, um, I'm going to mess with the exposure some on the people. I'm going to mess with some exposure some on the house. Uh, the first thing I see is I need a retouch layer, right? Can anyone see why? Right here. Do you guys see the smudge? That's either a smudge on um, the glass on the lens or more probable, I think it's dust on the image sensor, which sucks. That's why you don't switch the lenses unless you have to. You can get it off of there. You have to get an air blower, like a squeezy one, and open up the shutter and squeeze dust blower in there. It's not fun, but I think that's what that is. So anyway, um, first thing I'm gonna do, retouch layer. Remember, keep everything labeled, call it retouch. I'm gonna zoom in up here, Z for zoom. There it is right there, look at that. And this has healing brush written all over it, right? So I'm going to come on in here, sample all layers. Let's hope this works uh, to find the point. So let's go to the spot brush. Voila, fixed, done. Easy, right? Easy. Okay, next thing I'm gonna look at, you can see my histogram up here. Um, it looks like there's more darks than lights, way more darks. So we're gonna try to brighten some of this up a little bit. First thing I'll do is a levels adjustment. And it's telling me to pull my brights in. Give it some light already. This is the area right here that needs work. You don't want that to be too bright. 
zoom in. So I might just go to my brush, right? I'm on this layer here. I'm gonna go ahead and label, the, label this so I know what it is. And I'm gonna just brush this out, right? Because the thing is, is this didn't need to get brighter, this area. So do you see, I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna brush it back. And adjusting my brush size, because I don't wanna be sloppy. You can't see it. Remember, uh, Alt, Shift, click. You can bring it up. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Maybe some of the forehead here too, simply because it's right in the sun. Um, for some reason, the color shifted. So D for default, back to black. There we go. All right. All right. Next. I'm going to do this lady's face. Now, normally what I would try is selecting the entire person, and I might try uh, a curves or a levels adjustment on the person. But because there's such drastic difference between the sun and the shade, because they're looking, she's looking into the shade, she's backlit, uh, I don't think that's gonna work. So I'm gonna uh, try to bring up her face slightly by just simply selecting the face. Uh, remember, hold down your Alt key and you can pull this out on this side. All right. And let's give it another levels adjustment, see what happens. Look at that. Look at that. Pretty nice. Too hot on this side. I'm going to try to paint it back in a second. We'll go ahead and say, uh, you know, woman face. There we go, there we go, look at that. So before, after, before, after. A little bit in there, maybe I'll fix. Eh. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with darker. I think darker is a little bit better for that little spot. Honestly, the spot's really bothering me now, but I don't think there's any way to fix it. It's just part of her face. So I think we're gonna leave it. Looks good enough. Okay, um, glasses real quick. Okay, the glasses aren't in there, so that's good. All right, so Next thing I'm going to do is the shirt. As you can see, the shirt has way too much brightness on it. So we'll see if we can pull this down. I'm not sure that we can, but I'm going to try. There we go. Whoop, a little bit more. Subtle. Um, let's get in here and try to take some of this down. Exactly where my, there we go. All right, so I'm going to take this out because I don't really want to be changing. I don't want to make this part darker. I just want to make this shirt lighter. And like you can see what I'm doing is I'm really getting in here and I'm making sure all of the edges are correct. If they're not correct, I'm not leaving them. I'm literally gonna come in and fix it. Okay, I don't like that. I'm gonna undo and I'm going to get that little black bit instead right here. This too, um, I'm not sure yet. Let me pull it out. Whoop, pull it out. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it because it's black. I'm gonna take this one out, however. There we go. Okay. And this is um, woman shirt. And 
usually what I'll do after making an adjustment like that is I'll come in and check it. So let's check it. Look at that. It's telling me I need to make it slightly darker now. So we'll go up a couple points. Maybe we'll pull the whites down. There we go. Look at that. Some more definition in the shirt now. Okay. So you can see that was before when we started already. We fixed a bunch. Um, okay. Next part I want to work on, I need to work on him and I need to work on the house. Um, let's go ahead and let's select the house. Now you can see this is going to be a huge problem, um, the sky being separate. So that's going to take some fine tuning. It's not easy just clicking you're done. You can see I'm really coming in here and I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to take this one slow probably. See the tree in there? Don't want that. Uh, this is really worrying me up here, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, oh, my computer's having some lag time. And we have to be careful with this because we don't, the computer is telling me to take it to here, but obviously that looks terrible and I don't want to take it to there. So you need to dis determine what we think would be best. Honestly, I might leave it dark. The more and more I look at this, the more I think the contrast between the light on the side of her face and the dark of the building looks better. Um, maybe we don't need to lighten the shadow. So I'm going to pull it back. Maybe I'll try this, mid-tones. Mm. Yeah, I'm just not, not digging it. So I'm going to abort this. And, you know, I still think something needs to be done at the building. I'm not sure what yet. Maybe I'll try, maybe we'll try curves. So I'm going to go back to my selection here. And let's see what we can do with the curves here. So I'm going to give it a little bit of contrast. Now, I know it's hard to see, so I'm going to make this bigger. If I do one up here and pull, oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Already, you can see that was working much better than the levels. Um, this is the light side. So I'm pulling up part of the light. This is the black dark side down here. You can see that's why all of the information is there because it's such a dark part of the image. If you want to give it contrast, you give it what's called an S curve, which this is the top of the S. The bottom is going to be here. I don't know if this is going to look good yet, so I might take this S out. Yeah, see the S shape. I know it's, it's subtle because I'm not trying to add a ton of contrast to this. In fact, I don't even think it needs the blacks. I think there's already too many blacks. I'm going to take that bit out. I just like lightening it up ever so slightly. Yeah, I think that's much nicer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this up here uh, mansion. Okay, okay. I do need to mess with this dude down here next. So um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to select him. And I'm going to take this stuff out around. Okay. That's a decent selection. Oh, I forgot his pants down here. There we go. Let's give it a shot. Lighten it up some, it says. So honestly, I like it about there, but it's washing out part of his hands. So I'm going to take that out of the selection and let's see what happens when I get it really good in there and start cutting it. Okay, so we're going to zoom in. Control click on the guy. 
All right. Um, I guess option. Well, for me, it's option shift because I'm on a Mac. For you guys, it's probably alt shift, I'm guessing. I'm going to take his face out entirely. And his hands. All the skin. A lot of times I'll do skin separate from the rest because skin tones have such a different look. Let's put the shirt back in here. Honestly, the shirt is so bright in this area, I'm going to take it out. The whole thing. That's reasonable. Let me, um, computer just gave me some lag. You know what that means? It's time to command control S, save it just in case something happens. Okay. I'm going to mess now down here with the shirt. Something doesn't look right to me there. Let's pull. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yep, and come on around, really fill this out. Okay, we're gonna pull this back too. Yep, uh, we're gonna zoom in a little bit because there's, yeah, there it is. We need to get all of this on the uh, wood in the bin. At this point, I want my brush to be a little harder. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to pull the hardness up on it. There we go. Smaller brush. And this is what it's all about, guys. This is how you make something look good. You have to have the patience to put in. artwork and not a factory assembly line. Okay. Boom. There you go. All right. So this is, um, let's say, old man. All right. Um, let's check it. Look at that. Spot on. Spot on. Remember, I pulled it too far, but then when I took out the brights, spot on. Love it. All right. This video is probably getting a little bit long. What I would do next is color, right? So I would take all of this and I would group it and call it exposure. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it here. Next time, either this one or a different photo, I will mess with the color so you can see some of like fine tuning color adjustments. But you can see even after all that Lightroom work, I did individual masking on different areas of the image. In my opinion, Photoshop is better for that than Lightroom. You can do it in Lightroom um, with those filters, the radical and graduated filters, but I think that the masking function in Photoshop works a lot better for specific area touch-ups. Uh, this is what you ought to be doing to all of your photos that you turn in. There's a reason I only give you guys four or five to turn in instead of 50 or 60. And the reason is, is because I expect you to be individually masking. All right, guys. Um, remember, BirdBot, read it, answer those questions for me. Start working on your images. Um, and I will talk to you next week.